I used to play football on the Bonhomie estate. So I was a bit of a defender, I think. I was a tough one, not like Rio, who's very graceful. Tackle. The Premiership on ITV1 with Coca-Cola. Yeah. Manchester United have thrown down the gauntlet, but could Arsenal pick it up? Liverpool needed to rediscover their home form against rock bottom Leicester to keep their title challenge on track. Plus, we'll bring you all the goals and the action from a full programme of midweek Premiership fixtures. Good evening, Manchester United returned to form with a bang at Bolton last night and Alex Ferguson's team started today four points clear at the top of the Barclay Card Premiership. Tonight the chasing pack were all in action and over the next hour we'll find out who's keeping up with the pace. Terry's here to monitor progress. But before we turn our attention to the action news today of the latest manoeuvre in the managerial merry-go-round, Derby County unveiled John Gregory as their new boss just six days after he resigned from the hot seat at Villa Park. More news on that story later. But we start with tonight's match at Ewood Park, where second place Arsenal were the visitors. Both teams needed the points for rather different reasons. Peter Drury was there. Up for the Cups, but too far down the league. Perhaps pertinent then that Blackburn should recall Craig Hignett, a scorer on his last five starting appearances, who five years ago reached both knockout finals with Middlesbrough, but went down. One other change from their trip to Millwall, Damien Duff is in for Alan Mann. Arsenal, eight unbeaten in all competitions, have patched up all their injury doubts. Ray Parler has preferred to Giovanni van Bronckhorst in an otherwise unaltered side. Martin Keown, one of two who played in a heavy League Cup defeat here last month, though this should be rather different. So United need chasing again, Arsenal take up that chase, still seeking to protect English football's only unbeaten away league record. In fact, this is the only ground bar Highbury where they've lost a domestic match of any description this season. As Bergkamp, of course, was uh, given his marching orders at the weekend, Arsenal think wrongly and are appealing. They can't appeal about the uh, Keown situation because it's uh, a professional foul involved. But boy, they've got some suspensions upcoming. Bounced it off Dermot Gallagher and then uh, bounced it off Gary Flitcroft's hand. Well, Arsenal's free kick. Cole, Pires, Vieira. Through the channel for Bergkamp, whose run was uh, marginally ahead of itself, but for invention, imagination, speed of thought was terrific. And I'm not certain it was the right decision. It's unlucky for Dennis Bergkamp. Vieira took it away from Flickhoff. Fed Pires. Wiltor. Pires. Wiltor. Could come to Bergkamp! Arsenal lead away from home again. A goal born of delightful interpassing between two Frenchmen. And then the sharp instinct of one Dutchman. Will towards cross it was ultimately. Taylor's unfortunate touch and Bergkamp's emphatic one. And Arsenal remain the only club in England to have scored in every league fixture this season. Actually, uh, 
Coming in with Duff and sending him to earth. Rovers free kick, which will be orchestrated by their form player of the moment, Craig Hignett. With Taylor Ford from centre half, Flickcroft waiting, Cole waiting, and Keown close to him. Hignett's delivery. Costing a catch for Richard Wright. Pires. Great ball over the top for Henri. Friedel decided not to come. Henri's in, and Henri scores, doesn't he always? 25 goals for the season, Thierry Henri. Make as much fuss as you want, because he won't. What a sumptuous ball from Robert Pires, and from the moment Henri was showing a clean pair of heels to those chasing him, you just knew that at the end of the piece, the ball would be nestling in the net. It was. Keo. Neil steps in. Taylor. Two guy uh, gave it away to Wiltor, and it came to Henri, and now Silva Wiltor is offside. Which uh, salvages what looked like a nasty situation for Two Guy. Henri delivers now. He's onside. Definitely. Higner. Flickcroft. Björnabin. Duff. On the corner, Damien Duff. He can make it hard work for a fullback, and uh, that fullback had to double up with Sylvain Wiltor. Here's Hignett. It's 2 1. <laughs> Matt Jansen has Blackburn back in the game. And has Graham Sunis off his seat. Tenth goal of the season for Matt Janssen, and four of them have come against Arsenal on this ground. Hignett's delivery was ideal, just a little flick, just enough. Neil. Hignett. Janssen. Decent hit and a very good save, and Lushley just about took it away from Flickcroft. And the game, and the mood of the game, have altered radically. Good, strong wrist from Richard Wright. Oh, Lushley slipped, and Duff's onto it. Equaliser! Matt Janssen again! It's a terrific game, and Blackburn Rovers have salvaged something from a first half which had begun dreadfully. Oleg Luzhny, awful moment. But Duff made it pay. Janssen had a simple task. He That's will it. hate to see Three that back. Oh dear. Not a video he will take home to Kiev with pride. Last off it by Flipcroft. Arsenal's free kick. Pires quickly on with it. Parler. Luzhny. Here by Duff. Back in by Kia. On by Luzhny for Wiltor. Bergkamp. Will Tor won it. Vieira's attacking it. Keogh. Campbell. Bergkamp. Oh, what a compelling half that's been. What a story to tell, a story of utter Arsenal domination in the early stages. Dennis Bergkamp and Thierry Henry put them into a comfortable lead. 
But uh, Matt Janssen, after Sylvain Wiltor had had a third potential goal for Arsenal ruled offside, took charge and himself snapped a couple of goals at a half-time at Ewood Park. Extraordinarily, it is Blackburn 2, Arsenal 2. Well, holding a lead has been Arsenal's problem this season. Indeed, they've taken the lead in 20 of their 23 Premiership games before tonight and only won 12. The problem is haunting them again, though Wiltor has profited from uh, Henri's nifty work inside the box. Stayed in for Pires. Wiltor and Pires. Business again right at the start of the second half. Arsenal have won the game once. Some Wenger has clearly sent them out to do it all over again. Wilson. Vieira. Henri. Lucas Neal. And getting away from him. Henri and Bergkamp. Oh! He had to score, didn't he? There was just one change at half-time, and it was uh, to officialdom. Jeff Winter has had to take over as uh, an assistant referee. Andy Butler has uh, pulled a calf muscle. Butler, indeed, it was who erroneously raised a flag against Sylvain Wiltor in the first half. Jansen for Duff, who got goal side of Luzhny. is indicating to the referee, as indeed are many supporters behind the goal, that uh, he felt Oleg Luzhny may, albeit inadvertently, have handled his attempted cross here. Duff, away from Parler and Luzhny, who uh, went in thunderously second time. Dealing with Oleg Lushny, but uh, having been nastily embarrassed in the first half, he is uh, attempting to mend his reputation. That's perhaps overdoing the job. Oh. Lushny. Wilson. Pires. Wiltor, Bergkamp, Dennis Bergkamp. Well gathered by Brad Friedel, bounced uh, from Bergkamp, shot in that awkward spot just in front of him. Duff, two guy. I took it from Parler. And then went tumbling over Lushny, who has been booked and will now be sent off. More red for Arsenal. Number 43 under his reign. And the 20th red card to be shown in a game involving Arsenal this season. Whether that is the most just is uh, open to debate. Well, he's uh, the guy at the eye of the storm at the moment, for better or worse. Oh, now there's a bit going off. Uh, Keown involved with Janssen, and Dermot Gallagher's going to his pocket again. He's shown a yellow card to Matt Janssen. and climbing with him, the two becoming entangled innocently enough. Oof. Well, there'd be some who'd interpret that as raised hands. Keown, in fairness, was uh, an innocent party. No blame attached to him. It's fair to say it's getting lively. Giovanni van Bronckhorst, Dennis Bergkamp. Oh, he threw up an arm, did he, against Johansson? Trouble. 
Well, few that uh, Dermot Gallagher get at that. You know, I'm sure Dennis Burkamp, he was just trying to free himself, but off. Well, the pitch is fairly plain. It's an Arsenal free kick. Van Bronckhorst. That's now for Cole. Who's taking on Ashley Cole. Vieira. Pires. Burkamp. Dennis Burkamp. 3 2 Arsenal. With ten men again. This is a tumultuous game. And Rumble Dennis Burkamp, who it's arguable might uh, be lucky to be on the pitch. Pires' pass was precise, and Burkamp was always favourite from there. Why don't they start with ten? Gillespie. Always oh, uh, been sent crashing by uh, Patrick Vieira, or so Dermot Gallagher believe. Patrick Vieira takes uh, a different view. Two guys Fitcroft shielding. Janssen potentially waiting to strike. It is Janssen. Half a yard away from his second hat trick against Arsenal this season. Cole. was checked by two guy. So it played on. And here's Johansson. Away from Burkamp. Running at Vieira. Wide for Duff. Header out by Grimondi. Gillespie. Oh! That was pretty approximate. can set off and go. And his ultimate destination, entirely a matter of choice. He'll stay there for a minute if they let him. That'll do him nicely. Well, make sense of all that if you can. The long and the short of it is that uh, Arsene Wenger's successful unbeaten Barclay Card Premiership Tour goes on. Thierry Henry got one of the goals, Dennis Bergkamp got two. Between those, Matt Janssen unbelievably brought Blackburn back into it, and Arsenal had another man sent off. This evening, the, the Gunners are back within a point of United. Matt Janssen. It has been a memorable evening for a variety of reasons. Blackburn Rovers two, Arsenal three. I'm bound to say to you that Dennis Bergkamp, who was outstanding tonight, mm -hmm. had a moment uh, against Johansson, the Swedish centre-half, when his arm was flying. D did you have a view of that? Not really, because he was uh, turned uh, facing the bench. I didn't see that, no. And uh, it was, there were some heated moments in the game, but overall, I, I think uh, you must understand that uh, we play at the top, and Blackburn plays, of course, uh, to save their life. And uh, it was a very physical game, but overall, I don't think he, I, I think personally it was a fair game. It was a feisty game. It's going to be a competitive game playing Arsenal. That's why they're one of the best teams around. A great team, play great football, prepared, prepared to mix it. But you can't go smacking people in the mouth and expect to stay on the pitch. And the thing that galls me is that 10 minutes after that, he scores the winning goal for them. Now, the referee had sent off Oleg Luzhny before, and obviously he felt he couldn't send off two Arsenal players tonight. We'll get on to that contentious moment a little bit later, Terry. But for Blackburn, disappointment because they're desperate for points, played good football once again, but came away with absolutely nothing. Well, that's right. They're playing well. I mean, since colwell has gone there, I think they'll get, they're winning games, but they're mostly in the, it's in the Cups. They, they've, they've got to get some points in the league. And really, if they get their defence a bit better, their football, the quality of their football is as good as anybody in the, in the Premiership for me. Uh, Arsenal were outstanding as well. It was a, I really enjoyed the game. But what they've got to do is be a bit uh, 
a bit mingy at the back, I think, and not give too many goals away. Well, they gave away two in 21 minutes. 2 nil up Arsenal mm. were when Will Tord scored one to make it 3 nil. What did you make of this? Well, they looked like they were flying at that stage, 2 nil up. And uh, they were firing Arsenal, biting and scrapping. And, and as you see, they win the ball back, goes into Henri, who slips a beautiful ball to Will Tord, and a great finish. And you think, 3 nil, game over. But... The uh, assistant uh, referee here, as you can see, is in a perfect position to get it absolutely right. And what does he do? He gets it wrong. Because, uh, and, and well wrong, because this would have been 3-0 and game over without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, Blackburn would have been trailing. But I think when they got away with that, they feel, well, we've got a chance. And uh, Janssen scores a header here, a free header. He escapes Parler's marking and in, within five minutes, they're 2-1 That puts a completely down. different and complexion on the game, doesn't And uh, it? game on again. One man who didn't have such a good night tonight, Oleg Luzhny. He, no, uh... he didn't. I'm afraid he didn't have one of his better games tonight. As you see, the ball goes to him. He gets caught in two minds. He, he can knock it back. He gets caught all over. Duff takes advantage of it. Can happen to anyone slipping like that. And Janssen sticks it away. 2-2. Two -two. Big game on now. And uh, they, they know that Duff's the danger. And you watch Keown come and cover... Lujny in this situation, Lujny's turned inside out. He does fantastic to get across and he's cover not too that ground. Because, now, is he? no, but they know he's a danger. They said, they've said, go and help him. You can see him creeping here. He doesn't want to leave the defence. He don't, because if they clip it in behind him, they're in trouble. But he gets there and helps him out once more. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And Lujny comes in here flying and gets it wrong. And he gets sent off. You know, I, I felt that. Um, that was his second yellow, of course. Yeah, and, and I thought Wenger the first doesn't... one wasn't a, wasn't, a, wasn't a yellow card for me. Arsene Wenger didn't think either was And I, I, I thought he was a bit unlucky to get sent off. OK, now to the real controversy. Dennis Bergkamp hitting out at Johansson. Uh, Graham Souness thought that he should have been reprimanded in some way. Arsene Wenger, I think of Graham did think that, didn't he? He, he <laughs> didn't seem happy. As you say here, uh, uh, Graham and his team has had a bit of a slap in the face here. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and in fact, you would say there's more chance of him getting sent off there than maybe than against Liverpool on Sunday. Look, more of a sending off. Here, Perez does the samba, slips a beautiful ball through to Burkamp. Sods lot. Who gets the winning goal? Burkamp. But perhaps it balances out Will Tord's. Yeah, but it doesn't side. help Blackburn, I suppose. That's the, <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. OK, thanks, Terry. Well, next up is Liverpool and Leicester, title challengers against relegation favourites. So would it go to script? And we'll see informed Spurs against the team who've only recently learned to win in the capital behind the leaders. But could they capitalise on last week's hard-fought victory at Old Trafford? Clive Tilsley saw this one. 11 days ago, Liverpool departed Anfield to the sound of cheers. Tonight, they return to the sound of cheers and changes. No Gerrard injured, no Owen rested. The likes of Risa and Murphy have stood down too. But Vladimir Smitsa returns after injury. Recalls from McAllister and Berger too. It's Anelka and Heskey up front. Leading the Leicester attack, a 20-year-old who used to clean Emil Heskey's boots. Matt Piper starts a premiership game for the first time. Jakob Larsson and Jamie Skokov are fit again, but eight senior players are still absent. Southampton, Fulham and Bolton have all taken points here in recent weeks. Liverpool haven't taken the maximum points from any of their last four home games. In the last three matches they've started without Michael Owen. They've scored just one goal. Owen scored it as a substitute. Heskey getting up in front of Elliot. Turned away by Larson. Heskey, the hometown Leicester boy, winning himself a free kick from his former roommate, Muzzy is it. Surely the Premiership's bottom club can't uh, add to Liverpool's embarrassments here. Oh, yeah. Leicester have won three of their last four visits to Anfield. Man trying to test them in the opening moments. Well, the free kick, which is always rising over Ian Walker's crossbar. But it will be Leicester's hopes to play on Liverpool's nerves here. Piper, who is reasonably quick, taking on Poncho. Able to face up to him now and trying to set something up here for Leicester. Scowcroft was waiting in the centre. Poncho stood his ground well. Spitzer emerges with the ball. Now an Elka. Toppled by Stewart. That's 
the kind of opportunity that Anelka loves with some green grass to run into. Yellow card for the uh, teenage Leicester defender. And to add injury to the penalty. Stewart has damaged his right shoulder and it doesn't look good. Leicester do have a ready-made replacement. A left-footed defender in the shape of number five, Alan Rogers. Leicester substitution. You can never get a signal inside this ground, though. Free kick is Liverpool's. Oncho takes. Heskey's head out. He's got too much time to wait by Davison Hammer. That was a scorching drive from Dietmar Hammer. A volley hit with a lot of control and an awful lot of power. And talking of power, look at this header from Emil Heskey. Davison couldn't control his clearance, but Harman hit that with quite a bit of control, considering. Liverpool have completed the signing of Everton's unmistakable Portuguese defender, Abel Javier. He'll be eligible for the remainder of the Champions League. Everton are here next month. It's a good pass from Dudek. Good control, too, from Schmitzer. Into right. Stephen Wright, Heskey was there, but so too was Jakob Larsson. Stephen Wright was the surprise packet in that attack. Not just the fact he was there, but how well he controlled and turned the ball across the goal beyond the keeper. Gerard Willier is back on Merseyside after a Mediterranean break. He underwent further medical tests today. He's not quite ready to put himself through a match night just yet. to Leicester. But the challenge by Berger was illegal. Lost a free kick. And it is there. It came off right and he decided to take evasive action himself. Paul has gone out of play for a corner kick. I suppose he was just a little concerned that if Jetsy did that claim the ball might have been perceived to be a conscious back pass. Jones with the corner. Dudek reacting to punch. Sweets are unable to clear. This is Is it? Crossed by Rogers. This is Piper. Smart turn, good cross, good cross is there. Came off her Pierre Elliott. Corner kick given. Credit Emil Heskey for getting in some kind of challenge to put. Matt Elliott under pressure. It was as good a chance as either side have had tonight. Matt Elliott, who has scored in a winning Leicester performance on this ground, under pressure from Heskey. Seeing his effort deflected over and beyond the goal. Jordan Stewart, who was substituted in the first half, did dislocate his shoulder, which has been put back. Bursting forward and away from McAllister. In towards Scowcroft. And Dudek only just got there. And caught him in the mush for his troubles. But it was uh, both alert and courageous goalkeeping by Jersey Dudek. Heskey full stretch, just managing to rescue the ball from McAllister. Is it though? Stokoft. Looking to his right. Now MP arriving. Jones couldn't get his pass away quickly. Now Palmer charged it down. Here goes Emil Heskey. At last. They huffed and they puffed. And eventually they've blown the Leicester resistance down. And nobody in the Premiership will enjoy scoring more than Emil Heskey tonight. It's a goal against his first club, but a goal against any club is a godsend for Heskey. It's only his second since August. How mad it was who won the ball, and on Heskey went. 
and a very cool finish, just lifted it over and beyond Ian Walker. And Emil Heskey, who scored the winning goal in this fixture last season, has made the breakthrough tonight. But it was a mistake by Matthew Jones, which afforded Liverpool the run goal. And Leicester City, who failed to score in more than half of their Premiership matches this season, have got to break that habit to get anything from this game now. There's a problem back there for Matthew Jones, who appears to be in real discomfort. Just fell awkwardly after that tangle with Gary McAllister, very awkwardly. Leicester City really must wonder what they've done to deserve this. They're almost a full team of senior players absent. And Matthew Jones has had his injury problems this season. And in fact, starting a Premiership game for the first time since October tonight, will be unable to complete it because of what appears to be a serious injury. Job's hard enough. Well, this is just uh, stepping himself to clear and, and his pocket kicked by Stephen Wright. And he's won a free kick as a result. One of Liverpool's uh, successes tonight, Wright. Played this free kick. And towards Heskey! And that's a clear chance for Emil Heskey. His goal has taken his grand total in the Premiership this season to three. It should have been four there. They managed to get themselves back on title course at Old Trafford a week ago. Liverpool stay there. Never mind the quality, feel the results. Too many times Liverpool have failed to get the required results against the Premiership's lower lights, but Emil Heskey extinguished Leicester's light with uh, a much-needed goal for him and his club tonight against his former club. It wasn't wonderful, but it was a win, 1-0. You know, I've gone a long, long time without scoring. Um, it does get to you every now and again. But I kept, keep going, keep plugging away, and I knew eventually it'll come. To ask you about Jamie Gallagher, that, that's been cleared up today, that the club have acted, you, you've fined him two weeks' wages. What's your reaction to the, the police um, announcement and the FA's decision not to do any more? We've gone along right from the start, and it, and it wasn't right what Jamie Gallagher did. It wasn't right, and we can't have that. But it's extremely it's important that people must remember that the responsibilities, the crowd must remember the responsibilities, and we can't have that. And I think they've acted sensibly on that. It was going to happen sometime. I'm just saying that it was Jamie Carragher. Yeah. I'm pleased that nobody got hurt, so I think they've made uh, an excellent decision. Well, Phil Thompson, not surprisingly happy with just a three-match ban. Others uh, differ in their opinion. Uh, the fan who was allegedly hit says that uh, it's a disgrace. Cop out, fan fury as police and FA let Carragher off. What do you make of that, Terry? Well, uh... Carragher's never been in trouble before, I mean, I'd say that straight away, but he knows he's wrong. He was almost on his hands and knees pleading forgiveness the day after, and Thompson says that himself, and I agree with, with what Phil says. Um, it's a surprise that normally players get thrown at. To throw it back is like... Is it was a, a shock. reaction, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a reaction. You think, was he actually trying to hit the guy that threw it in the <laughs> first place? That's what I was... That was a long <laughs> shot. <laughs> on to tonight's game. Leicester, another team who played well and stuck in there but have come away with nothing. Yeah, they, they work really hard. Both teams work really hard. They're fighting for their life, Leicester, and there's no doubt about it, Liverpool needed a win. And uh, I thought both teams played uh, tough. And fortunately enough for Liverpool, they got what they wanted. And not only did they not get the game, but they, uh, Leicester, they also had two injuries as well, which, they, uh, which has compounded the problem there. Terrible for them, they're already suffering with injuries. But Leicester did have the best chances, really, earlier yeah, on. Yeah, I, I thought Leicester well, didn't have many chances. The ball gets knocked in at the Piper. He does a good bit of football. Pops out there to, to Elliot, who can finish. And really, I think he had to get it up and over the legs because they closed him down so quickly. And again, here, Muzzy as it gets onto the ball. And there's a great run from Scowcroft. They try and play him offside and he don't get it. And it's only the great goalkeeping from Dudek that stops him from scoring there. Well, um, Emil Heskey hasn't scored since August. No, and he makes no mistake here. He's just very positive, goes through. And as you see, Walker goes down just a little bit too early. He tried to stay on his feet, 
and it's not an easy one. You can see from here is a great view of it. He, he just blasts past those defenders, and there it is. If he'd have stayed in his feet a bit longer, make him make a decision, Eski, but he didn't have to. Potentially a good partnership with an Elka, then? I thought they did well on it, did very well. You know, um, normally we like to see a strike and one a bit deeper. They're both playing up, wide pace and uh, they, they did get problems and I think maybe the more they play together the better they'll be. Where was Owen? Okay thanks Terry. Well next up it's the surprise title challengers Newcastle. They're at White Hart Lane. Plus the action from seven more games. to take this corner the cavalry has arrived in the shape of Sheringham and Sherwoods and Poyets looking menacingly there too Richards is up it's only half cleared this is King Richards Everson sneaked in at the far post unnoticed and Tottenham have taken the lead deft little header from Dean Richards and Everson sneaked in corner then same routine as Anderton takes Richards he hasn't scored since his debut against Manchester United and he came close there it's for Bellamy to chase and Richards under a degree of pressure Tug on Bellamy's shirts has not gone unnoticed. Prepared to take this free kick. Acuna completely unmarked and the equaliser at the far post. In almost exactly the same spots that Everson had put Spurs into the lead. Got the better of Perry and Davis too. Shearer! Two in two minutes for Newcastle and they're in the lead. The pace and endeavour of Bellamy and Shearer lurking where he lurks best. Davis. Poyet. Sheringham. Great vision from Poyet, but not the power from Sheringham. Bellamy. Hughes. Looking for the run of Bellamy. And he finds it. And that is it for Newcastle. It took them 30 attempts to win in London. And now they've managed... Two on the trot, surely. Bellamy with the third. Newcastle home and dry. We had bags of energy in the second half. I'm, I'm actually almost mesmerised by the uh, mesmerised rather by the uh, by the performance of our players. I've got to say, second half, our performance was well below par uh, from where we've been at over the last coming weeks and months. So, um, very very disappointed with the way that we've lost the one goal lead. But a good result for Newcastle. Now, before we see the rest of tonight's action, let's catch up on last night's games, starting with Manchester United's demolition of Bolton Wanderers. Sir Alex Ferguson told his players it was the time of year to stop messing around. They responded perfectly. Already top of the Premiership, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer took only 11 minutes to open the scoring after a blistering run from Giggs. The Norwegian striker subdued Bolton again just before half-time with a glancing header from David Beckham's corner. United's superiority was nearly challenged towards the end of the first half by Michael Ricketts, Fabian Bartes, the immovable object. Sam Allardyce was witnessing another wondrous capitulation. Solskjaer finished off the home side on 64 minutes, another glancing header from the Beckham supply line to get his first hat-trick for United since December 99. 
Diego Forlan's debut was brought forward by a week after he impressed in training. And no United victory at the moment is complete without a goal from Ruud van Nistelrooy. He obliged late on to make it 4-0. The gauntlet is well and truly down. The natives were getting restless and so was Peter Reid. A typically tight derby game, just one goal settled it. Phil Stamp went on a magnificent 60-yard run past to Noel Whelan, who slotted the ball past Thomas Sorensen. In a week when the game's reputation has been tarnished again, Gianluca Festa became the latest entrant into football's Hall of Shame. In front of referee Paul Durkin, he spat in the face of Sunderland's Kevin Phillips, an incident that Steve McLaren described as diabolical. So much for managerial stress. Six days after quitting Aston Villa, John Gregory embraced Derby's relegation battle and then played down any deadly feelings for his old chairman, Doug Ellis. I left Aston Villa under, on very, very good terms with the board of directors and, and in particular with the chairman. I look forward to building up the same kind of relationship with my players here at the club, with the directors and uh, supporters alike. A win at Charlton last week was Gregory's parting gift to Villa. Last night he returned to the Valley for a look at the team he'll inherit. Billy McEwen picked it and Gregory would have been impressed with Derby's endeavour in a first half that ended with Malcolm Christie making himself a wonderful chance. He couldn't take it. Charlton gathered momentum. 12 minutes from time, Chris Bart Williams took aim, Derby's wall disintegrated and they'd suffered a fifth defeat running. Players have to be re-motivated. Money's tight. John Gregory wanted a challenge. He's got one. The main thing is for the players. They've got uh, Premiership uh, careers ahead if they want that. Um, so it's either the Premiership or, uh, or the Nationwide. It's up to them. I believe I can influence the team on the field uh, and certainly get the required points uh, to stay up this year. Uh, it's a very tall order, I know, but um, it's one that I'm really looking forward to. What do you make of John Gregory's move down the table? Well, it's been a bit of a soap opera, isn't it? One month they're their friends, uh, him and Doug, and then they're not. And then you're not surprised. But normally when someone leaves Aston Villa, it's because Doug says so. I'm not sure this time because it seems to me that uh, uh, John's a, a bit more prepared for his move than what <laughs> Doug is. It would seem to seem so, wouldn't it, after yeah. a week later getting a new job? That's right. OK, four more matches still to come, including Leeds' visit to Chelsea. When I say ready, steady, go, you shoot, yeah? Ready? Against Leeds. And Stanich. Stanich back in the Chelsea team after a one-match ban. And doing very well against Boyer and Kelly. Now Petit. This is good, Johnson! What a start for Chelsea! One and a half minutes on the clock, Good Johnson on target. His 17th goal of the season, he scored now in each of his last five Premiership games, and that is one of the very best of them. Melchior winding up the long one into the Leeds penalty area. Plenty of height on it, Hasselbank under it, Dalla wouldn't sit for him, now Dalla Bonner, Chelsea's second! Sam Dalla Bonner doubles the Londoners' advantage. Leeds appealing for what they felt was a handball in the middle of all that. Well, it did strike his left arm, was it intentional? What it is, is 2-0 to Chelsea. Problems for David O'Leary, Brian Kidd and Eddie Gray. The think tank behind Leeds United. It's a good one. It's Stanich off the post. Melchior working hard to retrieve. A shirt was held in the middle of all that. Mario Stanich, well, he's deserved a goal for what he's put into tonight's game. 
and a double celebration for you. In addition to the Johnson family, yeah, I believe. Yeah, uh, had a little boy yesterday, um, which is. Um, well, it puts puts football and, and life in uh, perspective. And, uh, I'm uh, I'm glad to celebrate it with uh, with a lovely goal. West Ham's away form has been dreadful since they won at Manchester United before Christmas. Paolo Di Canio appears not to be heading to Old Trafford. His impudence almost created the opener for Joe Cole. Two minutes before half time, the breakthrough was Southampton's. David James came for a cross, missed it and Kevin Davis claimed a goal he didn't know too much about. On the hour, another dead ball situation. Fabrice Fernandez will not forget his first Southampton goal. An absolute stunner. And the Saints' home form has jumped them up to 11th. John Gregory's gone. Thousands of Aston Villa fans want chairman Doug Ellis to follow. A pre-match protest was hardly the vibe standing managers Stuart Gray and John Dean wanted. Everton, decimated by injury, created the first half's best chance. Volleyed over by Kevin Campbell. While the chairman pondered who should fill the vacant manager's seat alongside him to a chorus of jeers, Paul Merson, one of those players who've criticised his lack of investment, conjured a rare moment of quality. A magical run, but after so much promise, not quite the end product. Everton finished the stronger. The Villa fans' protests would appear to have only just begun. Um, it's always the same at every football club when a, a manager disappears. But I think the players can draw credit on what they've done tonight. Matt Holland was playing his 200th consecutive league match for Ipswich. Over 25,000 fans were there to mark the occasion, and Ipswich took the lead in the 10th minute. Armstrong galloping down the left wing as he shaped a shoot. Zat Knight's tackle sent the ball looping over van der Sar. Marcus Bent lurking in the right place at the right time. Another victory for Ipswich, their sixth in seven matches at Portman Road, and they're out of the bottom three. So, with the top four of the Barclay Car Premiership all winning, just two points separates Manchester United and Liverpool. Leeds defeat at Chelsea leaves them six points off the lead. Ipswich are now out of the bottom three thanks to their sixth win in seven games. Blackburn's defeat means they slip a place. Defeats for Leicester, Derby and Bolton anchor them in the bottom three. There's plenty of Premiership action coming your way this weekend, kicking off with On the Ball at a slightly later time of 12.40. And Terry will be back on Saturday night, he promises. You can catch up on all the day's games at 10.30 in the Premiership. Manchester United led the way, and the challengers, Terry, well, they did their bit. They certainly did. I mean, it's, it's kept it open. This is what we want. I mean, if they'd have dived down, we'd go, oh, here we go again. <laughs> but 